Hey guys, it's Morgan coming back to you with another Dirt Church. I know I missed a week. Uh, these are not going to be specifically every week. I do my best, but some things get in the way, and I go to church on Sundays and all sorts of stuff. So uh, anyway, I'm back. I want to remind everybody that I really have no idea what I'm doing here. I just feel called uh, to share God's light in this world using this platform that I've been blessed to be given uh, here on this uh, YouTube channel and our uh, social media stuff. I cannot believe um, how very lucky and blessed I feel about that. This is what God wants me to do, so I'm just going to do it. I'm stepping out, I'm going to do it. Thank you guys so much for all the encouragement. Uh, you are right, this is very hard to do. Uh, I really struggle with this. I just want to curl up and not do it, just fix motorcycles and ride dirt bikes. Uh, but I know that this is what God wants me to do. So, by the way, I keep my notes on my phone, so that's why I'm always looking at my phone. Um, and so I don't have a Bible here is because this is just easier to deal with, and I write the verses down. So, anyway, last Dirt Church, uh, we talked about rewards and consequences and how all sin is equal in God's eye. And no matter how small we think our sin is, it's just as bad as anything else because it falls short of Him. Um, this week, I was reading, uh, I was in, spending time in the Bible, with quiet time, and I read this little bit of the Bible, and it just really spoke to me. So uh, in Luke chapter 7, Jesus is having dinner uh, with a man who is an upper-up in the Hebrew church. He was a Pharisee, they call him, and um, someone on here knows a lot more about that than I do, uh, but these are the guys who were uh, legalistic. They believed that you had to follow the letter of the law, the old law of Moses, which was given to Moses by God, uh, but they believed you had to follow that to the letter, otherwise you didn't make it to heaven. You were going to be struck down. And in the Old Testament, uh, that was the case, right? Like that was, God was very vengeful and he was very like white and black. And if you cross the line, you're going to die. Uh, and Jesus has come along and he started his ministry and he's t starting to tell people that, no, you actually aren't going to die. If you believe in me, then you will be set free from your sins. It'll all be washed clean. Um, he has not died for our sins yet, but he's preaching that. And so the Pharisees are against him, and they're, it turns into a, you know, a long battle, and they eventually end up killing him, um, if you don't know the story. So, <laughs> and by the way, to the guys and girls out there that are watching this that are not believers, congratulations for watching something that maybe is a little bit out of your comfort zone or you totally disagree with. Um, I've had a lot of messages from you and they've all been very wonderful. So, um, honestly, there's been zero... Like, a lot of people think I'm getting a lot of negative stuff on this. I don't. I really don't. Um, I think this is... Hopefully, I'm doing this in a way that's not too preachy and weird. Uh, and that's what's letting people be honest and open and not be mean. So, thank you guys so much for that. So, anyway, Jesus is having dinner um, and with one of the Pharisees, which... You know, if you look, you know, a lot of people are like, he shouldn't have dinner with those people. They're going to be the people who end up killing him. But he he uh, socialized and spent time with everyone. And that's what I, you know, one of the things that's amazing about him. So while he's there, there's a woman from town uh, who they describe as immoral. Um, and you kind of look in the backstory, and I'm sure she was either a prostitute or something like that. She was not a good woman in anyone's eyes, really. Uh, and so... But she had heard about him, and she, she was convicted to come and serve him, and so, Jesus, that is. And so she comes in the house, and she brings this big jar of perfume, and she's washing Jesus' feet with her hair. And I know it sounds really weird. There's a lot of weirdness like you know, in our modern times. But the important part is that she is giving everything she has, both financially and emotionally, to serving Jesus and to washing his feet because she, she believes he's the Messiah. She believes that he is there to save her. And she, she just will do anything to be at his feet uh, and with him. The Pharisee is super upset about it. He's like, he can't even believe that Jesus would let her touch him. Uh, and Jesus knows, he never says that, but Jesus knows what he's thinking, because he's God. And uh, he answers him, uh, you know, his, he answers his thoughts. And he says, um, he tells a story about uh, two men. These two, two men uh, both needed money. One needed a really small amount of money, and I'm just going to make up numbers here, but one needed $5, the other one needed $500. Uh, and one person uh, gave them both the money, 
and they used it, whatever. And then that person decided, you know what? I'm going to forgive those debts. I'm not going to make you pay them. And Jesus asks, well, which one of these people do you think would be is more grateful for having that debt forgiven? The person who had the $5 debt forgiven or the person who had the $500 debt forgiven? And the Pharisee, of course, is like, well, the $500 guy. And he's like, yeah, absolutely. And he equates that to this woman's sins. You know, she has a lot and very, you know, large sins. Again, we've talked about that in the last Dirt Church, how they're all just sin. Uh, but she has a lot of baggage and he forgives her sins. And of course, she's going to be elated, right? And I think that it shows that Jesus, first of all, it shows two things. First of all, Jesus is going to, his death on the cross <clears throat> is to take the sin from all of us. No matter how good or how bad we are, it's to take the sin from all of us. Uh, but those of us, myself included, who have a lot of sin and a lot of really nasty, terrible background and stuff that I have a really hard time getting over, uh, we are so much more grateful for being forgiven. And I think that is why Jesus does that. He, first of all, he's going to forgive all of our sins if we believe in him. And then he likes looking for us really screwed up people. And if you read the Bible, it's full of people, really, really bad people. Paul, uh, who used to kill Christians, like being forgiven and then being used for the kingdom, being used to share Jesus' light in this world. And, you know, I think that's just a wonderful thing is that, like, it just shows that the worse you were, the more grateful and the more excited you are to yell and shout about Jesus. And that's why I'm here. That's why I'm so excited to do this. That's why I step way out of my comfort zone to do this, because I was messed up and screwed up, and Jesus forgave me, and he has saved my life. And he's brought me to this place that I just feel like I'm living a dream right now doing what I do. Uh and I, I'm just so, so thankful. And it's just really, and it's really cool. Um, it, let me just read you, let me read you the verse that actually inspired me to even think about this. Uh, it's verse 47 from Luke chapter 7. Uh, it says, I tell you this, her sins, and they are many, have been forgiven. So she has shown me much love. But a person who is forgiven little shows only a little love. I think that's why Jesus uses us screw-ups so much uh, is because when all that sin is forgiven and all that weight is taken off, we are so, so excited to shout about it. Whereas if, you know, you know, it's just this tiny little thing gets taken off, you know, it's like you brush it off. You might even think that you did it yourself if it's so small. Um, but when you're in the hole that a lot of us have been in and you, ha you don't deserve to be saved, you don't deserve to get out of the problem that you've put yourself in, and then you do, you get brought out of that by God. I, I can't describe it. That verse really spoke to me because I feel like I'm that guy. I was that messed up. I made that many mistakes and Jesus loved me too. And he saved me and that's made me, you know, come here now. And it also shows that no matter how far gone you think you are, how bad you think you are, you're never too far for Jesus. Jesus and and is the creator. He is God, and God is so big and so massive. He, you're never too far from his reach. Uh, and I'm reaching out to you guys who are watching this who maybe you're not believers or you're, um, you are believers and you've walked away and you're like, man, I just don't know if there's enough... Um, God out there for me. I don't know if he wants me. I can tell you right now he does. Like Paul said in 1 Timothy 1, 15 through 16, Jesus came into the world to save sinners, right? And I am the worst of them. This is what I, this is what I love. I love this verse. This is Paul, right? He's the, one of the worst of them. He's like, I am one of the worst of them. And that, quick, let me stop there. He says, I am. Not I was, I am. Because he knows that that sinful nature is in him and will be with him until he dies. And it will be with me until I die. It'll be with you till you die. It'll be with all of us till we die. That sinful nature, that human part of us that just can't let go of it is always with us. Um, so he knows that. But then he says, but God had mercy on me so that Jesus could use me as a prime example of his great patience with even the worst sinners. Uh, then others will realize that they too can believe in him and receive eternal life. 
I, that is one of the most hopeful verses in the entire Bible for me. I absolutely love it. Um, this man who was an absolute horrible person, who was persecuting Christians, who wanted Jesus dead, wanted him out of there, Jesus used him to show that example of like, you're not too far. If, if, I, if I can save this guy, I can save you. And I just, I absolutely love it. I'm going to read it one more time because I just, I really love it. I just go through the whole thing. Uh, Jesus came into the world to save sinners, and I am one of the worst of them. But God had mercy on me so that Jesus could use me as a prime example of his great patience <laughs> with even the worst sinners. Then others will realize that they too can believe in him and receive eternal life. I just, I don't know. It's amazing. I hope you all know that Jesus loves you and he wants desperately to be close to you. No matter what you've done, what you will do. I mean, like I said, we're all, we're all sinners um, no matter what. And uh, he's going to love you no matter, no matter what. And the greatest way to show gratitude for that love, if you've been saved and, and you've, you, know, you know that God has pulled you out of that pit and he's you know, given you the life back that you've always um, wanted, the best way to show gratitude for that is to share it with the world. And I really hope that this resonates with some of you guys. Um, I, I hope that you guys think about it. I hope you guys share this video. I hope you share your, but not so much share this video. And by the way, again, I don't monetize these videos. I don't make a penny on these videos. I don't want to make it a penny on these videos. Um, I don't care if you share them uh, unless you think it might speak to someone you know who needs to hear about Jesus from a, just a guy, one of the worst sinners of them all, right? I'm, I'm one of them. And, uh, you know, a guy who's made mistakes is still making mistakes, uh, trying to make less, right? I'm doing my best to make less, but I'm still making them. Um, I just, I hope that you guys are inspired. Um, you know, in my other videos, I always say that I hope I'm inspiring you guys to work on, uh, but more importantly, get out and ride your dirt bikes. Um, <clears throat> I guess maybe a tagline for this would be, I hope I'm inspiring you guys to... How am I going to... i got to come up with a good tagline. I don't know. I, here we go. I hope I'm inspiring you guys to work on, but more importantly, share your relationship with Jesus Christ. There we go. I'll work on that. Uh, maybe we'll make it better. And I hope this Dirt Church did something for you. I hope it resonates with you. If it did, comment below. Uh, if you're having a hard time, email me, morgan at highland-cycles.com. Please reach out. If you're having a hard time, uh, either with Christianity or just with life, and you need someone to talk to, shoot me an email. I'll get back with you, I promise. Um, comment below. Call a friend. Go talk to a friend. Have coffee with a friend. Um, have a drink with a friend. Do something. Don't let it get you down. Don't let this uh, world beat you up too much because as God said, he's overcome the world. Um, this is short life, guys, and uh, we're going to get through it. I love you guys so much. Thank you for joining me. I hope this is okay. We'll see you on the next one.